it would be normal if n is greater than or equal to 30 or the population is normal. All right, cool. Does anybody, so let's go ahead and assume normality here. That's a pretty good one, yeah? No, no. Uh, you guys, what is the mean of those X bars gonna be? Whatever the thing is, do you want to be more specific than whatever the thing? Like, when we say the thing, are you talking about, like, my keys? My keys are a thing. The mean of X bar is mu. And what is mu? The mean of the population. Great. I like curly M's. Does anybody remember what the standard deviation of the X bars is? Somewhere on there? I agree. It was better you were better off looking at the previous page though. <laughs> And that sigma is, in fact, the standard deviation of the population. All right. So, you guys, when we estimated p using p hat, we had to use p hat in our standard error formula, yes? Is everybody with me? Why? Because if you're estimating p, you don't know p. Is everybody with me so far? You guys, if you're estimating mu, the population mean, do you know sigma? Can you calculate the population standard deviation without knowing the population mean? Being that the standard deviation is the average distance from the mean, we're not going to know sigma. Yeah? If we don't know the mean, we're not going to know the standard deviation. Cool? So just like before we used p hat instead of p, we have to use s instead of sigma, s being the standard deviation of the sample. I feel like I need to scare you or something. Why? Because I feel like you have the hiccups. No, I was just going. Okay, so I want us to real quick do a little bit of an exploration on is S, is the standard deviation of our sample going to be equivalent to the standard deviation of a population? What do you think? Is it going to be close? Well, let's look. The answer is, is that's a good... No, because when we took those random samples in the other app that you, those of you at home can't see, when we took those other samples, the standard deviations jumped all over the place, one, but also with the larger the sample, the closer S was to sigma, yeah? Okay. All right, so when we do, our, when we do procedures about the mean of a population and we have to use the standard deviation of the x bars <clears throat> and we have to use s in place of sigma which is what we have to do we don't have a choice so we don't know sigma we're going to have some extra little pieces of things we have to do is everybody with me so far all right now we haven't yet really discussed why uh, we call the standard deviation of the sampling distribution the standard error. So I'm, I'm going to go back to our picture up here where we had the mean of our X bars, mu, and we have our sigma of our X bars being sigma over the square root of n, right? Okay, you guys, 
The standard deviation in general, how do we interpret standard deviation? What's the interpretation for a, a standard deviation? The average distance an observation is from the mean. Now, translate that to this specific distribution. What is an observation when we're talking about the sampling distribution? It is an, it is an X bar. So it's the average distance X bar is from mu. So when we, when we take our sample, we get our X bar, we are like, and if it's not equal to mu, we have sampling error, right? Because the sample isn't perfect. And in fact, the distance between any one X bar and mu is that sample's sampling error. Error due to just the fact that random sampling happens. Okay? We call it the standard error because it's the average of those sampling errors. Everybody good? All right, so for today only, we are going to live in a world in which we know sigma, which is silly to begin with. We're still going to run a confidence interval. Okay, so structure of a confidence interval was a statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. And when we were, for the confidence intervals we did in unit six, what was our statistic? P hat. Plus or minus, our critical value was a Z star times the standard error was P1 minus P over N, but because we didn't know P, we used P hat. Yeah? If I wanted to apply that same structure for the means, what should my statistic be for the means? X bar, plus or minus. For right now, we're going to do a Z interval. So it'll be a Z star for my critical value. What should I use for the standard deviation of my statistic? Sigma over root N. And this is how we calculate a one sample Z interval for mu. Everybody good still? Okay. So we're going to look, be looking at one sample Z intervals from you. And with that, you guys, what is my margin of error in this particular case then? Z star times what? Sigma over root n. Okay. All right. And this is an actual procedure, this one sample Z interval. This is the procedure you pick if you're trying to estimate a mean and you know the standard deviation of the population. Okay? And so chances are you will not know the, the standard deviation of the population. Okay? And in fact, the only time I anticipate you'll be asked about Z intervals for mu will be for a sample size question such as this one. But I'm going to take you kind of through what this looks like anyway, okay? All right, so if we want to be within 95% confidence and within 1.2, we need that Z star times sigma over the square root of N to be less than or equal to 1.2. Because that's my margin of error, yeah? All right, what is Z star? One point what? Nine six times? Five over the square root of N, because that's what we don't know. We want that to be less than or equal to 1.2.
What are you guys getting? 66 point... So seven? You guys, can you have 66.7 monkeys? So what is our smallest sample size going to be? 67. All right, knowing that, so let's go ahead and say we did get a sample size of 67, okay? What would my confidence interval be if my sample mean, my X bar, was 14? So my estimate would be, my point, remember that 14 is called that point estimate, singular number estimate is what we get from our sample, plus or minus 1.96 times 5 over the square root of 67. Is this feeling okay? Yeah, that being said, what do we what do we know our margin of error is gonna be, give or take? 1.2. So let's see, I bet we get 12.8 and uh, 15.2. But hey, what do I know? I'm not very smart. What do you guys think, okay? Are any of you guys going to see...